here. The enclosure size, especially in a car, is often the limiting factor. Plus, if the port gets too long, it's harder to fit inside the box. You'll need some kind of bend in the port to make it fit. Third, use a program like WinISD, which is a free program you can use to model your enclosure. Not only will it give you tools you can use to analyze your frequency response, it will also calculate your port airspeed velocity. You gotta keep that airspeed low so you don't have that chuffing. There is a big downside to the program. It's not been updated since 2016, and it can be a royal pain in the rear to use. Tip number four, if you can, you should use flares. I'm a big fan of this style flared port right here. I'll give you a link to them down in the video description, but they only go up to six inches in diameter. So for really big systems with huge subwoofers, you should check out some of these big ass ports from Amped Up Car Audio. I've got links to all of these down in the video description, plus a link to a calculator that will do all this math for you. Which brings me to the fifth tip. Click on that link. It will take you to DIYAudioGuy.com where you can check out that port length calculator. There are two versions. One's a standard calculator if it's designed for circular, square, and rectangular ports. To use that, it's just a matter of choosing either a metric or freedom units, plugging in your net enclosure size, your desired port tuning frequency, choosing round or rectangular, and plugging in the dimensions of your port opening. The other calculator is made specifically for round ports with a flare. It has a couple of extra features. It will tell you your total overall length, and it will give you a link to a flared port kit. These kits come in three parts, two flared ends, and a straight center tube. The calculator will tell you how long you need to cut that center tube to get the proper length. 